Hello again, YouTube. This is Black Tiger Miner coming back at you with the rest of this video. So in the first video, I'll call these guys the council. So we'll leave it at that. So this is part two of the council talking about CASPA. And just put in the comments answers to any of the questions or if you guys want to discuss that or let me know what you think about the video. And let's check the bubble real quick. 8.9%. And let's get back to the video. So when I say we, the collective royal we of Casper, <laughs> um, we, we've been oscillating around sort of 50th biggest market cap in the world for a while now. And obviously we have the whole um, contentious issue of coin market cap refusing to list it properly because it's Binance owned and Binance doesn't like it because Casper has very lo loose, tenuous links to Coinbase. So I think it's quite petty there. But why do you guys think that we haven't had a major uh, sex, as in centralized exchange, list us yet? Okay. Let's let's move on to sort of I guess user adoption. Uh, tech always isn't the key factor in a in a dominance race. Things I've I've talked about is having this um, minimum critical mass sort of threshold. Um, if we go back to the VHS days, there was a, a fight between VHS and Betamax to see which is which one would be you know the household one, and VHS won simply because of a marketing. Um, thing, even though it wasn't the best tech, Betamax was a better technology. Same with Blu-ray and HD players and all that sort of stuff. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, Ethereum has all of the devs, it has all of the users, it makes all of the revenue, basically. It, it wins on every metric, pretty much, in terms of, you know, smart contract app uh, platform. And so every time I see, oh, hey, this is the new ETH killer, blah, blah, blah. Um, they have this massive, you know, hurdle to, you know, how, how on earth is it going to catch up with it? How, do you, what do you two say to that, that, you know, can Casper even catch up? Yeah, I, I, I agree. It, it makes like when you fully understand Casper and where it's heading, it makes every other layer one, two and three completely obsolete. And Lightning has lots of pros, but the big con is that it is not secure. So yes, like the bar tab, you have to settle on the base layer, i.e. Bitcoin. Um, but it's the Lightning nodes that are unsecure. So there, I see a future, a near future, where a big Lightning node hack will happen and a lot of money um, will, um, will, will be lost. And that's the thing. Like we started crypto with basically a, a, a steam driven car and all we've been doing is you know bodging add-ons to it with seller tape and glue going oh and we've now got rubber tires and we now got air conditioning and a cd player etc but at the end of the day it's still the horse pulling a cart and then all of a sudden we have a tesla model s rock up called casper completely new tech it would absolutely yeah and it just makes everything obsolete um and like Governments could easily just effectively white label CAS for their CBDCs. Not that I'm, I'm a big anti fan of CBDCs, but um, yeah, it's it's crazy. Now so um, I'm not too. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really buy that argument. Yeah. You know, um, Spartan. Um, I think you actually gave a, a good answer to your own question. Um, so the way I look at it is that with anything that could be attack, you have to try and mitigate the, the attack surface area of whatever you're trying to defend. Um, and so, yeah, having a, a doxed team and a really good team like Shy, Matt and Jonathan, that by, by them being doxed and out there, that is a valid attack vector at the, at the moment. But the way I look at it, it's a bit like raising a child. You as the parent are the main surface you know attack surface area um so if you were offed then that child will be orphaned and whatnot and uh, and so really as a parent you've got to 
uh, imprint all of the values that you want in your child up until they leave home, whether at 16 or 18. But once they're their own person and adult and they've left home, that's your main job done as a parent. So if you then died, you know, the yes, it's going to be bad, but, you know, you've massively mitigated the surface attack area. And so that as an attack vector is, is not so big. So, yeah, it's a really good point, mate. Uh, I just want to throw this out there. <clears throat> okay. You could prove that I'm not Satoshi. You can't prove that Yonatan is not Satoshi. True. Well, unless he wasn't in um, Van Noy's area in, I forgot the date, 2013 or whatever, they did reverse IP address um, Satoshi and he was actively doing changes to the blockchain um, <clears throat> in the Van Noy's area at a certain time and date. So if we could find where Yonatan was <clears throat> at that point, then that would prove or disprove it. Yeah, <clears throat> I, so, so what Harry said is, is a valid uh, con concern because as I said earlier, these days it's he who shouts the loudest and most gets the eyeballs. And that's why FUD circulates a lot faster than good news. That's why, you know, bullshit stuff like ESG from BlackRock, you know, is effectively controlling the world at the moment. So yeah, I think in, in the short term, we're going to see a mass um, hatred, I guess, eventually over the next five or 10 years to all the, 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 the things which, you know, the tree hugging hippies, sorry, that's, that's bad wording, um, the ESG army um, don't like, you know, we're going to see, you know, if you have a fancy car over the next five years, you're going to be hated because you're, you know, killing seagulls and baby seals and stuff like that. So I think there is an incoming mini um, scuffle or a war against proof of work stuff. But I think when you properly look into it, it's, you know, I mean, the whole gold market, gold mining, the whole gold industry still uses more energy than Bitcoin. The banking sector, SWIFT, the dollar payment network, everything, um, or, or the, basically the modern day financial system uses more, like way more energy than Bitcoin mining. Now, CAS in itself is, is way more efficient than, um, than the Bitcoin network, but it's actually a positive. So there are ways that you can turn proof of work systems into actual uh, carbon negative um, uh, um, systems. So for example, if you remove methane, methane is something like 60 times more greenhouse, um, ha ha about, I think it's about 60 times more greenhouse effects than um, just removing carbon. And so what a lot of Bitcoin miners are doing is um, using methane flaring um, as its source. So if you do that, you're actually, you're not carbon neutral, you're carbon negative. So I, what I see coming in, in again in the near future is that near all or, or most miners will be using green energy, if not methane flaring, which you know is even better. And so that argument basically dies on its head when all Bitcoin mining or all Casper mining is, is completely renewable. And it won't be just, you know, a, a waste of usage. So what, what's happening with a lot of green mining projects is that they'll go out and build a, a massive wind farm or something, but they won't put 100% of the energy derived from that into mining. It's normally about 50%. So what, what happens is 50% of the energy derived from it goes into mining. So that's great. And then the other 50% is given back to that local area, the local, local uh, energy grid, et cetera. So it's, it's a win-win. And that's how they're getting, you know, planning permission for stuff like that, because it, it, it is le legitimately a win-win. And I mean, eventually, as space tech gets better, I don't see any crypto mining happening on Earth. I mean, I'm probably talking 20, 30 years in, in the future, but you could leg legitimately have um, assets ASICs floating in space that have uninterrupted soda um, powering from the sun, which is a massive fusion reactor that turns up every day. So, but yeah, in, in the short term, I think, yeah, everyone's going to be, oh, proof of work, shit. But I think it's just the uneducated, um, typically, the, you know, the mass retail market will probably cotton on to s stuff like that. That's just my two cents. Um, Adam yeah, so, so that's a layer two issue. So, um, when when 
when we get into the realms of uh, a decentralized, I don't know, housing market, so Zoopla or Zillow or, you know, Rightmove, you have a, a, a tokenized marketplace like that. Um, there will be a, some sort of layer two where there's, you know, everyone will have a de decentralized personal ID. So uh, think of WorldCoin by OpenAI, but better <laughs> and not a shit version. Um, and so you'd have, you'd give an API access to your own personal Digi ID, so to speak, which would verify your funds and whatnot. But that will be built. That will be part of a, a layer two smart contract type thing. Yeah. And, and, and also your, um, your question is actually, that has a, a nice spin-off question as well, because as you know, the US is exercising choke point 2.0, where they're basically just going after the on and off ramps. So it, it's, Every day, it's getting harder and harder to get your fiat into some sort of uh, centralized exchange to then get it into the crypto world. So, yeah, your AML CTC um, question will be valid for the on and off ramps. But yeah, as as Jim said, that there, there are um, there are new sort of uh, projects coming on online which will help on and off ramps where you can just send your CAS and oh, send your GBP to a wallet of some sort. Uh, more bank account and then you get cars in, in return but the other the, the spin-off thing which I, I just thought of is that one of the, the the negatives or the cons which we haven't spoken to uh, today which I think is a bit of a, a, a moot point was the uh, three-day block history so part of the pruning mechanism with Casper is that in order to keep the you know the block size not the block size the the block data chain low is that it prunes the blockchain after three days Everything after yeah. that it is gone, but uh, and so there could be an issue where proof of funds or the origination of funds would be an issue, especially if you're like let's say a court case. It's like, well, where did this, you know, where where are the transactions of this CAS and this wallet, blah blah blah. But that's now a moot point because the the, the dev team have now got um, archival nodes, so they've got the whole hi backlog history from from day one so in order to prove that there wasn't you know a secret speed mine or, or whatever and so they're, they're going to maintain these ar archival nodes so it's a bit of a moot point so just in case anyone else was worrying about this three-day block history pruning but doesn't the um archival nodes add uh centralization in any capacity no no it's just storing data it, it, it's not part of the of the dag or the ghost dag it's just there if oh. anyone wants to interrogate it they can get you know just a, like a download a csv i don't think it'll be a csv but you know yeah it's not part of the actual um ghost dag but it's just there if anyone needs it okay so, yeah. so all the all the answers were really good answers by the way and um so what I'm hearing is that it's not even an issue, really. Nah. Casper will be able to um, be compatible with the centralized world without becoming centralized itself, right? Yeah, it, it was all about whoever builds on top of Casper. It's that it's the issue for them. Like if I wanted to set up a, an art, like a, a, an exchange, AML, so anti money laundering and counter terrorism checks, etc., would be my issue. It's got nothing to do with Casper. Exactly. I mean, when, when Dag Knight's released, uh, etc., I mean, it completely n nullifies the existence of Ripple, for example, and any interbank transfer protocols. So, for example, the, the reason Ripple's doing well and, and well, it's not doing well, but the reason why the, the, the concept around it is important, because if you take a billionaire or a massive company or a bank and you're going to send a billion dollars or more cross borders, it's T plus three plus, uh, you know, maybe 25 basis points. So th there is a, a, a currency exchange fee of let's say 25 to 50 basis points, which is millions, by the way, if you're sending billions, and it's T plus three, they have to wait three days for, for uh, finality. So this is why Bitcoin became very big in, I, I guess, the billionaire worlds, um, because you get block finality or transaction finality in, in you know 15 minutes. Whereas with Casper, you could basically send unlimited amounts of money instantly with 10 second finality i mean it's just absolutely insane and a prime example of this was that russian dude that got uh, killed by putin he's the fifth biggest bitcoin holder on the planet and it, there's a reason for that there's a great video from asylum kid jim ski bomb and uh wolfie but i'm gonna reach out to these guys to see if or reach out to this asylum kid to see if 
the full videos here because if you notice we don't get responses from the other two people we'll call them the council but we'll see if we can get the full video or an unedited video or see if they're going to post it somewhere but let's check the casper bubble one more time it's up 8.4 percent we'll look at Ka, um live coin watch uh 0 0.0425 Market cap is 876 million, volume 17.2 million, and currently it's 0 0.042. So things are really going up today. It's up almost 10%. But well, let me know what you think about that. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check out my Twitter page at Black Tiger Miner at Twitter. And this is Black Tiger Miner telling you guys to remember Casper, Casper, Casper. And let's get back to the money, guys.